Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story, and we're actually outside the Muscle Car and Corvette National, and this is a special car. I'm with Rex Meyer, and we've been talking for over two years to share this car with you today. Rex, please share with them what your make and model is this one. Uh, what I brought here to the show is a uh, original, I guess, Ford GT40. It's a prototype race car, one of two original cars that were built in aluminum skin, 30,000 stick aluminum. Uh, it was a brainchild of Allen Mann and Ford Motor Company. The uh, car was assembled at the Allen Mann Race Shop in England, and uh, the first race it went to was Sebring 1966, and uh, at that it's the lightest GT40 ever built, and thus potentially one of the rarest GT40s that exist in the world. So here we go, and let me take you to show you this. Okay, so we are going to be right here, and let me just start with that profile. 40 inches off the ground, and there it is. This car was one of those cars that was a childhood hero. I had a slot car that was blue just like this. I, I did measure the car and it's 39 and a half inches to the top. Is that right? On this car. And so we weighed it with fuel in it. It's 2,160 pounds with fuel load. Wow. 2,160. Oh we believe God. that to be the lightest GT40 ever built. Here's kind of a neat thing. Yeah, please. This signifies that it's been tested, of course, for race car, but it's also been uh, checked with the uh, hospital type of uh, scope for uh, radiology and things that way, like an x-ray machine. And what they were looking for, I'm really not sure, but they said this makes it a 200 mile hour tire. Uh, very, very rare tire. New old stock, 65 dated original tire. Wow, that is absolutely great. So we've got auto light spark plugs, number 16. Any designation on why 16 or? The 16 is on the car. This is the number the car had on it in 1976 at Le Mans test days when Ford Motor Company still had it as a Ford team car running time speed trials at Le Mans, Le Mans, France. Got it, okay. Obviously our fuel filler. Can you just open that? Usually yeah. there's a big hole. Uh, there's actually a fuel tank inside a fuel tank. Got it, okay. So we've got the fuel tank inside the fuel yeah. tank. Now, Super cool. you, yeah, mentioned, you mentioned the fuel. This has a fuel crossover system, so there's not a filler cap on this side. I see that. This is built with a large, like a three inch vent from side to side, mm -hmm. and you can actually fill quicker because you only have one guy opening one cap. So it's a quicker deal. Uh, very, very few cars were built with a fuel crossover system. They call it a long distance racing package. Okay. And then uh, the colors on the car. Uh, it is the typical Allen Man racing colors with the gold and the red. The, uh, the white identification marks were added at Sebring so they could differentiate between the AM2 car and this AM number one serial number car. And we have the road lights on this car. Now are these European headlamps? It is. Uh, they're a Marshall. Okay. Yep. I noticed that. We have some venting. Is that for braking? This, yes. This uh, the, the, well, the, the brake scoops actually, the cooler scoops are here. These are built to come in and go inside for the dash ducts. Oh, here. okay, got it. For the uh, passenger yeah. and the driver. And if it's a detail you want to see, see here, they actually closed that one off because that's just a defroster. I guess they didn't figure the drivers needed to see. But okay. there, there's this, this painted piece in here. <laughs> they actually blocked off the air inlets. So this air inlet is made useless, so this demister doesn't work. So now I see several, can we open this front piece right here? We don't have to open the whole hood. Yeah, this is for access for a spare tire. This has to be accessed during the race. And the tire and wheel assembly has to come out and touch the asphalt during the race. And there you can see some of the aluminum bodywork in the car. This is a, it looks like some type of a sensor. It doesn't look That's like a windshield mask. wiper here. Windshield wiper, okay. These fittings are all original. These are actually helicopter parts. You'll see no other GT40 with white connectors here except for AM2. Wow. Um, so how long have you had the car? I'm working on my 40th year. That ownership. is amazing. Bought it in 1982. And why'd you want to get a Ford GT40? Oh, uh, Ford man at heart. Started out life, uh, bought a Model A, 1930 Model A Coupe, which I still have at the home place in the barn okay and uh, needed to go faster so I bought some Shelby's and needed to go faster <laughs> and had a Pantera <laughs> and needed to go faster and uh, so I had a 427 Cobra for a while and needed to go faster and at that point 
what next I could find was a GT40 and of course a race car, so a kick up, but it's a Ford team race car and uh, it wasn't quite this good a shape obviously when we bought it, but uh, that was just a up the ladder type of up the totem pole progression I guess. Well just you've been a great caretaker to begin with. Alright, we'll put that back together and while you're doing that I'll feature just these wonderful black eyeliners and even the bolts you can see how the bolts work there with these headlamps with the glass on that head. The and this is 30 thousandths thick and this entire front end weighs about 38 pounds. Wow. With the lights and everything. Well, I think the next thing we should take a look at would be, um, let's so open up the driver's side, or the, you know, but it's this, this side, if you like. Is there a difference in the sides? Don't forget that big hood piece. Uh, no, ambidextrous as far as design and size and style. So I'm actually going to take you on this side, and it's a tight vehicle. I mean, it's not easy to sit in. Would that be accurate? Fire bottle. I'm going to use my... Uh, Use my light just so I can show some of the details there. This is X side down there. Now, what's the material on these seats? It looks cloth like. Uh, it, it is a nylon, like an aircraft industry type use. And there's the actual correct bottle that we could put on. Yeah, this is supposed to be bolted in there back in the day, but of course, obviously, again, old technology. Here we have, you pull that and explode the yeah. chemical inside the interior and the engine bay. So, current safety device, very much needed to protect driver and car. Got it. And you could see this aluminum frame right there going around and up and across. These are actual equipment items for the driver because here's the fuse boxes in the day in case they needed to change a fuse. They could do that, hopefully, safely while it was driving and racing. Got it. All right, let's uh, let's go to the other side. I, what is this right here? Uh, ignition module. Ignition module. Got yep. It. Let's go to the Very other side. Very similar. All electronics. Ford, which it's all Ford electronics. New old stock. Got it. Really cool handles. Before we get to the heart of the beast, now we'll show the back of it before we do that. So tell me about Allen Mann Racing. Give, give me some detail, a little history there. Um, Allen Mann was actually contacted by Ford to uh, run sedan classes, uh, little Cortinas and uh, Cortina GTs and Lotus uh, type uh, cars, uh, and uh, was very, very successful at it. And so uh, Ford contacted Allen Mann to start racing the Mustangs when they first became available. And, uh, I believe Alan Mann was racing Mustangs before Shelby had his hands on Mustangs and racing, so. So it was before Shelby. They, uh, the windshield, yeah. The, as you see, you can see with the better than the windshield, but this is still original condition. That steering wheel's not been touched from new. Where it's cracked and tore, that's from back in the day. Wow. One of the few parts of it that have to restore. It's a five-speed ZF transaxle. From the factory that way? Yes. This, this car looks exactly like it did in 1966. That's true. And then we have the instrumentation, as you can see. And we have our friend of the channel, Bob Ashton, showed up, who's in charge of the muscle car and Corvette National. And uh, Rex, you just shared something with to Bob. Tell him why we have this car here. Well, I've had a lot of show experience with a lot of cars over the years, from Shelby Mustangs to Model A's to 427 Cobras and Panteras, and now up to this level of ultimate car for me, anyhow. And uh, of all the shows I've been to, and with this car, I think it's about the 90th show we've been to uh, in about a two and a half year period. Uh, this is, in my estimation, the best run show the best laid out show, the best controlled show. I mean, I don't know where I would find a fault here other than it's not long enough. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> otherwise, uh, we've showed at Pebble Beach. It was a good show, but it doesn't measure up to the quality of staff and controls that we had here. 
uh, had fun there. We have a blast here. Bob, so, just, Bob, just real quick too, the muscle car in Corvette National has been going out, is it 13 years? Yeah, this will be the 13th year, obviously, our 12th show. 12th show, 13 years, and I want to say myself, thank you so much. This is my eighth show with you, and it's a real honor to be able to hang out with these cars that I know you work diligently all year long to go out. It is the greatest muscle car show on the planet. I've said it many times. Bob, what a treat to have you. Anything you'd like to tell the viewers? The only thing I can tell you is you have to experience this event in person. It's not just about the cars, it's about the people, the stories, the history. Guys like Rex who are willing to bring a multi-million dollar car with incredibly significant history to share the stories with the people. You gotta come here, you have to see this event in person. Bob, you're a great ambassador to the car hobby. I thank you so much. And we're gonna grab Rex and continue on with this video. Sound good? Thanks. Thanks guys. Glad Thanks for the here. endorsement. Alright, so let's take a look under the hood, shall we? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about this this shifter again before I before I jump out. Um, it's the uh, well special, only one like it in the world, and uh, it could be because this car had an automatic transaxle on it for a while. But it is a ZF transaxle. It's a prototype transaxle. It's not like any other GT40. And uh, this is the five-speed forward gear setup. And I see the word starter there. So the starter yeah, is button on the opposite. The button is on the other side. Forward of that. Yeah. Got it. Okay. All right. Let's uh, take apart the back. Is there anything I missed on the interior? Uh, I did notice these yeah. little wedges that tighten that as it closes. Yeah. These are put on there so the door doesn't fly up. Exactly. As the pressure comes in, the door likes to I take saw. off. What is this right here? This hole? Uh, the car was originally built by design. The earlier cars had a latch in here that you would lift and, okay. it, would, and it would pop up the yeah. hood in the back or the bonnet and the boot. Well, the back here, that would pop it up. Well, the hole was already in the press, so they didn't change it. Got it. You'll see cars where this is glued over, pasted over, taped over, and nothing, which we have here because it's nothing. Understand. Uh, the entire roof weighs seven pounds. The entire wow. roof. Wow. So there's a lever there, a bolt there. Raise it from this side. They call that the bundle of snakes, I believe. Yeah, bundle of snakes. So what carburation do we have here? We have period, of course, date coated carburetors, but these are Weber. Let me start on your side. And let me just show that view. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's start on your side. These are Weber carburetors. They're classified as a 48 IDA. Okay. They're period built, they're original carburetors to the car. They came with the car in 1965. So, original component, naturally aspirated, not no pressure, no kind of glorified turbo or superchargers on these cars back in the day. I noticed a marking right down there. It's all the way like, it almost looks part of that, by a generator or something, or an alternator in front of the fan belt. So well, that's, yeah. that's a casting number to a GT40P part. Got it. Specific for the 40s. Yeah. I'm in no rush on this car. This is something I've been waiting for for a long time. And then these are just uh, these pans here. Just bolt. what's underneath the pan? This is access Battery? here for the gasoline. Okay. Gas comes it. back to here. Uh, here's an odd piece you won't see in any other GT40. Show me. This is like an external AccuSump, meaning that you have a big can you set here, half okay. full of pressure, half full of oil. You plug it in. You open a valve. It blasts oil into the crankcase. Not a legal item to have on a car as far as racing. Oh, okay. But that's how they got oil in the crankcase without having the judges or scrutineers actually seeing what was going on. And our venting here, guys, see the, the these vents here, I'll just show that, go right to the brake and you can see the foil here on the car and that's a better way to see the braking system there. Yeah. Okay. The uh, shock absorber is another notable thing. Uh, eight shocks were built like this for the two Allen Man cars, aluminum conies. Rarest shocks in the world, probably, as far as conies. Again, date-coded original shocks to the car. Really now, we, we can't show you real easy, but this car also has the quick-change Phil Remington brake system. 
maybe the first car or pair of cars to have it, but you take the wing nut off, the wheel comes off, and if the caliper removed, the rotor will fall right off. Really? Nothing holds a caliper on but two bolts, and absolutely nothing holds a brake rotor on except the wheel. Let me see so, if I can show a little of that on the opposite side. Just the one thing you can see, the caliper, here's like a piano hinge. And these tabs here, if you pinch this, if you can see I'm moving that, yep, that'll drop that. down and the pads come right out. So no bolts hold the pads in place. You just pinch this, grab that, swings down. Of course, wheels got to be off. Of course. They come straight out. Very cool. Neat sway bar on this car, too. Let me hop on that side. And even the, the back window, you can see here. Venting through here. And I see a stamping or something right there. Yeah, that shows the gear ratios and the serial number of the gearbox. All the originality. And we got our coil on this side. This is brakes. Yeah. yeah. This this should, this is the roll bar here, the 240A Warner fuel pumps, coil, original type of wiring, original spark plugs. Uh, regulator, voltage regulator. The uh, suspension is made differently as far as pickup points. Any other GT40, this bar it hooks here. This is special. Placement wise, it helped with the anti-dive and brake problems that way that they had some cars with it. And they eliminated that pretty much with this type of system. 289 special Ford GT engine. Um, original 66 built motor castings. The uh, tubes here, you don't see any kinks. This is all sand, hand bent, so there's no hot spots or a place where it's weak, where it could break or tear. So sand bent pipes, all original pipes. Well, I think while it's open, can we fire it? No. Okay. Exhaust. Oh, exhaust will go right to the back, so we need to close this to fire it. Yeah. All right, let's close it. That makes sense. Get a shot of this. I will get a shot of that. That's pretty cool. Just to prevent any rattling was hunker down before we started. Yep. Now we'll see if the old Ford wants to start. All right, we'll try it. How do you start it? Because this doesn't look like this is something normal that you start. Uh, a few switches to make it go. Okay. And I'm guessing you're taking the shoes off because the pedals are so small. I don't have room. Yep. yep. I kind of saw that coming. I like how you jump in there like a real race car. And now right here, this hump's where there's a fuel crossover. Okay. The four-inch rubber hose goes from side to side, connecting tank to tank. Okay. Battery, neutral. Neutral. Everything here stays the same. Give it some fuel, ignition.
Well, uh, I've been waiting for a long time. It did not disappoint. So wonderful to see Bob Ashton as well. Thank you for the great compliment to his show. Thanks so much for being on my car story. Sure. And the car, uh, as far as speed and power, it was geared to go 212 mile an hour, which it did. Le Mans, it was the fourth fastest car of all the cars I was there at test days. Is that right? Le Mans test days, fourth fastest. Anything else I need to know? Oh, man. How many hours you got? <laughs> well, we'll stay right there with that review. Thanks so much for being on my car story. So nice to meet you. Thank you.